Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Gaia journey, um, to our noon Eastern session and a warm welcome in whatever time zone you may be coming from um, or that you may be standing or sitting in. Um, you can go ahead and just type in the chat in the bottom of your Zoom screen um, a little hello and where you're coming from. And um, we can start to get a sense of who's here and in the room. My name is Antoinette and I'm standing on Lenape land, what's known as Cortland Manor, New York, uh, near the Hudson River. And um, we are just delighted to be here together, able to celebrate our dear friend and uh, teacher, Arawana Hayashi, who um, has just come out with her new book on social presencing theater, The Art of Making a True Move. And it really is um, such a powerful piece of work that, that um, we get to explore together today. Um, and, you know, personally, my own experience is having had the opportunity to work within my own organization um, with Eileen Fisher, which is a clothing design company. Um, and we, you know, in our moments of transitioning and figuring out what was next for the business, we were able to use social presencing theater to really see and understand what was going on for our organization and for ourselves as we stepped into to the new possibilities. Um, so I'm delighted to be partnering with the Presencing Institute and sharing this work um, with you all and the, the many, many uses um, and forms that it has taken in our global community. Um, so it's wonderful to be able to do that. And for those of you who may be just joining the Gaia journey for the first time, I will help us land a little bit in, in that experience. Gaia stands for the Global Activation of Intention and Action. And the idea being that we are really looking at not only um, Gaia as Mother Earth, but also as each of us has an opportunity to explore our own uh, purpose and, and sense of um, beingness on the planet. So with that, we have created a journey that allows us to dive into that exploration, which is part of a larger annual cycle of many of you may be aware of ULAB and ULAB 2X. Um, but the Gaia journey is really focusing on um, really prototyping this potential, we're trying to I, look at the idea of a micro masters and, and what that would take in transformation literacy. And really what that's looking at is the relationship between system and self and the way that we are um, reflecting on this idea of transformation literacy and bringing it into each of these sectors is by looking at the different acupuncture points over uh, this year, 2021. So we started with finance and money with Katrin Koffer um, and her work on just money and looking at moving from an extractive view to just um, view around money. Social presencing theater is today um, where we're moving from systems thinking to systems sensing. Next month on April 1st, we'll look at soil and food moving from industrial to regenerative agriculture. The following will look at democracy and governments for governance from dependency to direct and dialogic and technology from surveillance to co-creativity. In June, and what you see at the bottom of the, of the kind of embryonic you here is this is a global forum where we really will um, step into this healing collective trauma knowing that our current moment of societal disruption needs to be held in an experience of really global sensing and sense making. So we'll do that together and invite you all to participate with us in the middle of June. And then during the journey, we'll continue um, to economic transformation, pathways to well-being for all. We'll go to well-being cities, looking at the SDGs within planetary boundaries. We'll look at learning and education and what it takes to democratize transformation literacy and look at business and leadership and mission-driven enterprises. So that's just a little snapshot of the Gaia journey and the experience that we're on together. Um, many of us are also, or um, have gone through ULAB, really understanding Theory U and are now in the prototyping phase of what's called ULAB 2X. So 
Um, if you are in either of those spaces, welcome back. Um, and for those of you who are interested, we'll share more information about upcoming opportunities and ways to get involved um, towards the end of the session today. For now, for the celebration and uh, storytelling and experience of practice together, I'll turn it over to the co-host and uh, founder of the Presencing Institute, Otto Scheimer. Thank you, um, Antoinette, and uh, hello, everyone, um, also from here, from the Boston area. Uh, today is such a... Uh, special day for us, uh, such a day of celebration. Um, Arana Ayashi um, probably doesn't need a real introduction here. Uh, she is an educator, uh, innovator and performer. She is a co-founder of the Presencing Institute and uh, she is uh, the creator of a new social art form called Social Presencing Theater. And um, uh, as of uh, today or as of yesterday, she is the author of this book that we are launching with this session, uh, Social Presencing Theater, The Art of Making a True Move. I want to um, begin and frame the session we are moving into uh, now uh, by reading uh, two quotes. <clears throat> we have art in order to not die from the truth. Friedrich Nietzsche. So that's a very poor translation from the original German, which is much more evocative and which is the, uh, and kind of which comes with the meaning uh, we have art in, not, in order to not vanish and die in terms of who we really are, in terms of our true existence through being stuck in a world of objects with no interior, interiority and no resonance. So that's the, 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 the context here. We have art in order to not die from the truth. The second quote comes from the uh, 20th century avant-garde artist, Joseph Beuys. <clears throat> the only revolutionary force is human creativity. The only revolutionary force is art. The only revolutionary force is human creativity. The only revolutionary force is art. When we look, when we take these two quotes, one from the 19th century, from a 19th century philosopher, and one from a 20th century avant-garde artist, when we take these two lenses, these quote as lenses, and look at the current moment, what do we see? What we see is, uh, a moment of crisis, a moment of disruption, and a condition where we know everything that we needed to do different. And yet, that knowledge does not translate into acting otherwise, into transforming our actions. So in other words, on the level of the collective, we have a knowing doing gap. We have a disconnect between the head and the hand. And from a systems perspective, what I would say is that the only way of addressing that is, addressing that disconnect is by activating the intelligence of the heart. Which means on a societal level, activate the healing power of art. So that was um, when um, 17 years ago, I first uh, met Arana. 
that was sort of the background I came from. And the situation was that I could think and sense what was necessary back then, but I could not do it. And the profound experience I had when meeting Arana is that, that I describe a little bit in the foreword of her book, uh, was uh, meeting uh, a person, meeting a human being who actually has all the gifts to do that, to, to, to bring that dormant potential into reality, to manifest that dormant potential. Two years later, uh, she and I, uh, together with Dana and Katrine and uh, Beth and others, co-founded the Presencing Institute in order to co-create methods and tools for bridging the knowing doing gap, in order to address and transform the three big divides of our time, the ecological, social, and the spiritual divide. Looking at um, the uh, current moment and uh, what and Arana's work, uh, the work of social presencing theater, which as you all know, of course, is not only Arana, but all her collaborators from around the world. Um, I would say uh, the impact that's already manifest, quite manifest, has been uh, in particularly on two levels. The first level is systems thinking, which really has uh, through uh, the work of social presencing theater, advanced into system sensing. State of the art systems thinking includes system sensing, which uh, is exemplified by the methods and tools of embodied knowing that social presencing theater has been pioneered, has been pioneering over the past uh, 15 years. And um, the second area of impact that I see, and, when, and now I'm speaking as a user, as a, so I, like many of you, I, I'm involved in, many, in a, quite a number of change projects in organizations and communities and so on and so forth. And I find myself uh, to be a quite frequent user of these um, uh, methods and tools because uh, they allow us to create a map of uh, a complex situation that is concrete, that is novel, that allows us to make invisible dynamics visible. And that creates a little bit of an intuitive transformative roadmap forward. And all of that just in a few hours. So um, that's why I as a user find myself uh, very often kind of um, bringing in these kinds of transformative methods and tools. Within the past 15 plus years, social presencing theater has moved from very small <laughs> experiments, uh, basically Arana in your living room, right? Living room style experiments. To then we took it to organizations like Eileen Fisher and, and other, others. And today is really being used around the world by a global ecosystem of change makers that use, refine, and advance these, um, these uh, methodologies. What you have uh, created uh, for us, Arana, is a gift to change makers and to human beings across the planet. Uh, it's a gift that inv invites us to realign body and mind, not only on the level of the individual, but also on the level of the collective or the, le the, the level of the social field, or as you like to say, the level of the social body and the social mind. And with that, my dear friend, I hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Otto. Uh, Otto, you saw something in the potential 
of this embodiment work and social body co-creation that I certainly did not see myself. And that pulled us into this um, stream, which now includes so many um, collaborators and co-creators. Um, my own close team of uh, Manish uh, Srivastava who was with us this um, this morning session, earlier session, and Angela Baldini and Laura and Ricardo Dutra, who is also the designer of the book, and so many others, our teachers, uh, social presencing theater practitioners, and um, and many who who worked on this kind of collaborative movement way before uh, for for all these decades that um, that I've had the honor of traveling in my life. So, so grateful for this opportunity, for thanking so many people for, for joining today uh, in this um, moment when we're um, so happy to be able to uh, share a little bit more with our, with our book. So we would always start uh, all of our sessions with social presencing theater and um, also in the presencing institute with this bit of landing practice grounding practice so that we feel our um, we really feel our embodiment because our life and pressures and anxieties and speed and entertainment it often keeps us from in this thinking world right so we need some time to just go whoosh you know i'm going to settle back down onto this earth so I'm going to ask us to do that for just a minute or so. If you could just really feel that your feet are on the ground. You can just um, really take a breath and feel that you've landed on this planet Earth. Wherever your space is on whatever the land that you live on right now, in so many places on the planet right now. Please take a moment to just be there, be present, to be connected to our good mother earth. This earth body that holds us close, that nourishes us. So we take a moment to really feel and appreciate that we belong in our spot right now on the planet. Every being has a place on the planet right now, and this is ours. We feel our back strength. We can just let go of thoughts or thoughts come and go, but right now, we're putting our mindfulness, our attention on the feeling of the body, the breathing body with a strong back. Feeling all of the ancestors, teachers, brave people before us, all of us cheering us on as we collectively co-create a good world for our children and grandchildren and on into the future. We also notice this vast space around us, the sky above, complete openness, freshness, We really celebrate a sense of open, spacious, not knowing. And we rest our attention for just a moment on our heart. This tender, part of 
part of ourselves that feels both joy in all that we appreciate, all that we feel grateful for today, the fact that we can just be together, see one another, And also the sadness, the sorrow, the grief, with so much suffering on this planet. And our heart can hold both the joyfulness and sadness of being a human being. So this moment of landing in the body, feeling our embodied, presence is an essential ingredient for social presencing theater. And I'm going to ask you just now to make note that this shape where we're sitting is still, it's not moving. It's waiting and resting. And in our social presencing language, we, we call this still present moment shape our sculpture one. Now take a moment and attend to what is it the body would like to do right now? What movement would it like to do? We can bend or stretch or just shift its position to something. It doesn't matter what it is, whatever it is, you're noticing that it is moving and then it is still resting in a second sculpture, a second shape. Okay, please do this together one more time. Moving however you'd like. It doesn't matter what you, what you do, just moving. And then stopping so that you have a still shape. Okay, please do this again. Moving, what does the body feel like doing? Not, not what I think would be good, but what is it that the body feels like doing? What do those hands feel like, shoulders feel like? What about the waist? What does it feel like right now? What does it feel like doing? We do that and then let that rest somewhere and rest in a still shape. Perfect. That's all it takes for social presencing theater is being able to be mindful of moving, still, moving, still, with a little bit of awareness, letting our awareness antennae go out and that is what we call an embodied knowing, a sensing, as Otto said, a felt sense of our environment and of others in our space. So with that, we'll come back to the practice, but with that, I would really, um, I'm so pleased and honored today to be able to invite um, two of our dear, dear practitioners and teachers Heather Huggins and Giovanni Gutzmann. Now they, um, Heather teaches at the community college, City Community College in New York City in Queens. She teaches in the theater program. And she started to bring the social presencing theater into her uh, uh, courses, into her studio space. And uh, Gio is one of her students. And this grew over three years. This activity grew to um, communicate and to sense make and to shift the quality of the culture of their uh, group and of their uh, campus activity. So we are inviting them to speak a little bit today about what they experienced with the using social presencing theater within this context 
And I would love to invite Heather um, to begin. Thank you so much, Arowana. It is such an honor to join you all today in the celebration of this beautiful work that you've created for all of us. I am an assistant professor of theater at Queensboro Community College, as Arowana said. My name is Heather Huggins. Um, Queensboro is one of 25 campuses in the City University of New York system. And community college learning is really personal for me because my journey actually in higher education started at a community college. And many years later, I was fortunate to participate in one of the social presencing theater advanced training programs. And in that program, we were invited to collaborate with our peers and design a kind of prototype in our context. And the context that I'm in is just magnificent. At Queensboro, students come from 130 different countries. They speak approximately 79 languages. So as an educator, I was watching all of this diversity and um, individual authenticity flourish in the classroom. And then I would see some of those very same students on campus and other contexts in countering obstacles, different challenges around identity and power and privilege. And I would witness that authenticity just dissolve. And many of you may know in SBT, we have a, a practice called stuck. So this was a very deep stuck in my being that as much as I could support in the classroom, I, I didn't feel like that support was really having an impact on the transformation of daily life. And so in April, 2018, I invited a few students and alumni who speak English as a second or maybe third language to gather together to practice SPT. And their response was immediate and significant. They wanted to see what would happen if we started using SPT as a kind of group culture, as a kind of ensemble training, we say in the arts. So we invited a few more people to practice and we did that for a few months. And eventually we created a performance for our community on borders and migration. And that was our, our first really big act of a creative project. And since then we've just continued to take on new projects each time kind of opening and closing, welcoming new participants to join. So now we practice together, we co-create performances and students even present their action research findings as undergraduate research in the community. And we've begun collaborating with different communities on our campus to initiate workshops for other communities like those communities themselves and also the wider public. So there are two kind of key insights that I was thinking I would offer this beautiful celebration of social presencing theater. And they're, they're deep learnings that I have learned from the presence, of course, of Arowana Hayashi and also all of my peers in the community. And the first is that relationships are really everything. This has been the most profound experience I've ever had of this space leading itself. It isn't about a single person having an agenda or arriving with a very specific outcome. We as a community come and go as we are able. We show up for each other. We tend to the space we share together and, and we listen and see what's emerging. And then we, we do what we can to bring that to fruition. So one of our most visible actions in our campus community came in partnership with one of our very treasured campus cultural centers the Harriet and Kenneth Kupferberg Holocaust Center. We wanted to offer our allyship and solidarity with that community when they created a recent exhibition, Survivance and Sovereignty on Turtle Island, engaging with contemporary Native American art. The exhibit centered the ramifications of genocide and also resistance to erasure in indigenous communities. And the exhibit is the first for its kind in any Holocaust center or museum in the United States. 
So group members wanted to show up and initiate there in that space and join in that action. They created a workshop on empathy to action, inviting participants to experience SPT as a way to not only experience generative listening, but for generative action. And I think this helped all of us see that SPT can actually contribute to peace building in our community. And it reminded us that the teaching of SPT says that the true move honors each being, every social community in relationship with the earth. And it was such a visible way to see that when we invite students to initiate, we generate meaningful change. And the second insight is just the power of intention. That impulse to support students across identity, power, and privilege is still guiding us. I am in awe of each student, alumni, every person we've met in their journey. We initially began as artists and it's inspired us to see ourselves beyond a single discipline or label. It inspires us to contribute to things like research, which artists don't typically do. Members are even training to be facilitators so they might share SPT in their own contexts. And we all wanna reimagine the educational system together. <laughs> And the students want to participate in that because they are the most affected. They have the most at stake. And I think they have the greatest insight about the role of body in this transformation. And as Arawana reminds us, it's because the wisdom is already there. So thank you so very much for listening to my small piece of this story. I'm delighted to introduce you to one of the members of that group, Gio Guzman. Uh, thank you, Heather. Um, hello, hola. Uh, my name is Ioanni Guzman, Gio for short, and I am originally from uh, Tlaxcala, Mexico, and uh, I moved to Queens, New York since the age of two, and I've called it home ever since. Um, my theater journey began back in 2016 when I uh, made the decision to switch from the health and science department to become a, a physician assistant to theater to become an onstage performer. And around that time, I met Heather Huggins, uh, who not only was uh, a, a professor in theater, but also my acting coach for an original show of what it meant to be other in America. And so we told our stories, we told our journeys and how also the political and social climate of 2016 affected us. Um, and during that time, she introduced to embodiment uh, works and exercises in which that began my curiosity. And I wanted to dive deeper and know more about what was all of this. And so shortly, uh, that wish was fulfilled when she gathered a small group of both uh, students and alumni from Queensboro, in which I was part of, that we were introduced to these practices and uh, we also had a reflective process and reflective dialogues with language aesthetic cards. And so from that moment, I felt like there was an immediate impact within myself of how perhaps the things that I was missing and how the things that I was looking for came through these practices, um, how to be authentic, how to explore, how to be curious. And so in the beginning, it was a little messy for myself, but within practice, I kept on going and kept on going with a community of students that were very generous, were very helpful and built a community in which we all supported each other. And so later on that uh, group grew and we created this original show of Borders and Migration in which we kept on practicing, we kept on reflecting, and a lot of these things came more and more impactful within me and within my body, specifically with the exercise that um, is called the 20 minute dance, in which I got to explore my authenticity and learn how some things that I try to hide both consciously and unconsciously were hurting me and how my community and my uh, fellow students and colleagues were trying to reach the same goal of authenticity. 
And so I was very lucky enough to then gather that all as a research at a diversity conference and also two other uh, fellow uh, colleagues of mine that presented about these um, exercises and how potentially this could also not be used as a theater or artful way of processing and uh, um, art making, but also perhaps on everyday life, how to really just be in touch with ourselves and be better within our families and our communities. And so later, uh, shortly after, um, a small team were, was uh, invited to Isaman, a small team of Heather, uh, Isabel and myself from Queensboro. And we learned from uh, more SPT from other practitioners. We shared the space, we shared our skills, and we were just honored to work with the youth community and gathering all that information, it was brought back with gratitude, with care, and with love back here to New York City. And so now I am part of this workshop called Empathy to Action at our cultural um, center. And my role is just to be another body, to share these skills, to create a safe space, and to unlock potentials with uh, authenticity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gio and Heather. Um, we so appreciate what you are doing and um, uh, feel the power of your work and your commitment and your um, care. We feel this so, um, you know, we, we can feel it in our own being. Um, as Gio said, he and Heather, as well as Laura Pastorini and myself were hosted um, in Mexico in the Yucatan by our dear, dear uh, friend and colleague and uh, Claudia Madrazo. And um, I will, we have a little very short clip, a video clip of some of the work that we did there, which could, in, which I'd like to show first, and then invite uh, Claudia to um, to speak about a little bit about this project. Claudia and I have known each other. She has been uh, such a support over so many years. The first manual practice manual I wrote was under because she invited me to come to the Yucatan and, and write there. She has sponsored workshops. We've done our social presencing theater teachers retreats there. Um, and uh, she and I have been either in Mexico or in New York, we get together or, and we, 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 uh, we are like connected in terms of, she is my, one of my most inspiring uh, partners for thinking and drawing and moving. And um, we, I'm remembering now we went to see Dia Beacon, this mu contemporary museum close to where I live in New York. And we just danced through the whole thing. We did our sculptures in the rooms and next to the pieces. And we, <laughs> and luckily very few people were there. Sometimes we just imagined we were part of the installation. But over the years, it's just been uh, an unbelievable treat for me to know her and to be able to work with her and her amazing work that she does with La Vaca Independiente. Uh, I'll let her speak more to that. And also um, Lara, who we love and who's been my close uh, teacher we're working. We, work, we teach together and work together uh, from Uruguay. She also hosted all of our trainings, advanced trainings in Latin America. So I would invite the two of them and uh, after this little bit of video, so you could get a feel for what it, the work was like that we did with uh, youth, uh, Mayan youth. Um, in, in the Yucatan Peninsula. Vienen los alumnos y alumnas de la secundaria. María Canto de Roche, que está aquí ubica, es, es aquí parte de la comunidad de Izamal, del pueblo de Izamal. Y pues nos acompañan el día de hoy todos los chicos. Y pues lo, lo que invito a todos y a todas es poder tener este espacio para poder compartir, para poder encontrarnos también 
y, y pues hacer un espacio de confianza, un espacio armónico donde podamos experimentar. Claudia, we so much appreciate you uh, joining us today and just have so much love and appreciation for all of the support you've given us in this um, over the years and particularly these last two years of, of being our home for the creation of, of social art and uh, how we can uh, how we can link our art practice with with community with communities. So please, uh, we would uh, invite you to share your story with us. Thank you, Arwana. Hello, everyone. Hello, Otto and all the Presencing Institute and all the Gaia community. I'm in Mexico at the moment and always. <laughs> so incredible is today, one year ago, we were all together in, in Istamal, in uh, Yucatan, in the social art residency. Incredible. This one year out of time has been profoundly transformative, I think, for everyone. So uh, thank you for giving us the space to, to share a little bit of the insights and the experience to reawaken the connection with these kids, with the, the group and with the community. So as our, our as Arawana was saying and Otto did as well, one, um, maybe the, the connection that uh, brings us closer into this work is the belief that art is such a vehicle for transformation, if not the one vehicle for human evolution. And since I met Arawana, we've been, we have been discussing and holding one question um, that after many years, we kind of went, okay, how do we move from the question to the, act, to the action? And the question basically was, how could we bring closer together social change processes that we were all already part of. Uh, I'm also in the world of social change processes through art and education. So how could we bring closer together social press, social change processes and the aesthetic qualities? So what we were already doing and what was already happening could evolve as art form. So that was kind of the question. 
And that took us to this journey of social art residencies. And uh, what I want to share with you at uh, this moment is what that meant and what, how that question led into this beautiful experience and investigation. So the one first thing I wanna kind of um, remark whether, and I know it's super obvious, but one of the things that I wanna always say is to be art, which is the, the, the meaning of theater, it actually has to be visible. If it's not visible, it's not art. So then the question was, how do we make visible our process of change? And the investigation in this retreat in the Yucatan, and you can imagine the Yucatan as being the land of the Mayans, is the second largest jungle in the world after the Amazonia in, in Brazil, in America, the second largest jungle in America. And the Mayans are living cult a living culture with deep struggles. And we've been working in this land for almost 25 years. So the social art studio was hosted for 10 days with basically two parallel intentions. One, and mainly in service of the Mayan youth, uh, which with whom we work, to bring spaces and, and experiences to connect with their identity and to activate their sense of purpose with a, a culture that is rapidly eroding as much as the nature there and the jungle is in big threat. So we work with youth to activate their personal and social processes of change. And then with the community, with this group of presencing theater practitioners and other artists, social artists, the invitation was to think and to investigate what social art meant and how do we come about doing social art? What is it? How does it look like? How does it feel like? What are the elements, the aesthetic elements of this form of art? And maybe another obvious state or thing to say is that art has both form and content. So the content of social art is the mere process of social, of personal transformation. The content of social art is our own personal journey, individually and collectively. So we design this journey of 10 days as a collaboration between uh, presencing and the independent cow, La Vaca Independiente, and our um, own view and, and methods together to flow into this multi really dimensional journey where in, in one parallel life, we were designing these processes of co-creation, connecting with nature, connecting with self, uh, awareness, meditation, and designing this journey for the youth. And incredibly, we had just three, just for you to imagine the situation. We are in this jungle, in a retreat, uh, designing something that will bring out in the community for this youth, for these uh, kids. And we were only going to meet them three times. So we had to be very effective in what, how we did what we did. And we started with what we just did together was a social presencing theater with a sculpture one, stock. And with that stock of each one of the kids, that stock was the seed and then sculpture two 
that they could see themselves shifting, moving from a place of deep sadness, deep sorrow, deep closing and seeing no possibility or no potential and feeling very depleted to a place where they could start seeing themselves differently, shining. So the, the mere act of seeing each other, seeing oneself as a mirror of an art form that they could talk about was the catalyst, catalytic, maybe something like that, of creating this performance that they themselves started to de design and, and then perform. So in the journey of these 10 days, we came together with these kids and felt with them their, their feelings, their, their thinking, and with that as the, the mod of the sculpture, we started together reflecting and building and creating and co-creating moments with, with them as little groups. So we ended up in a performance in the village, out there in the world with public that was just randomly there in the, in the, in the plaza and their teachers and the, the principals and other members of the community. So somehow we, we were in this multidimensional space where we were moving from an inner space to a complete open, um, expansive performing space. And the, the most, uh, and everything was guided around performing, reflecting, and awakening their own um, sense of who they could be and mm -hmm. how they could think, be, think about themselves differently. And it was yeah. so amazing to see how they suddenly realized that they could actually shine and that they don't, didn't have to go to that dark story that they have built for each other, but that they could actually awaken different way of seeing themselves in that school, in that community, community and become artists and agents of something that started to feel differently. Right. I, I love this uh, so, so, story, so, Claudia. Yeah. And, and maybe, Laura, uh, uh, do you want to come in with Claudia also? Uh, I know that you also were there, and, and the two of you did such amazing uh, work, particularly with the young people. So there were two groups of us, one kind of adults, as it were, and we were global from US, Europe, and um, Latin America, and then the, the young people. So uh, as Claudia said, we had a kind of uh, several tracks running at the same time, uh, but uh, always with this a sense of basis of what it of the of social art. Please, please, uh, Laura, uh, join the conversation. Yes, thank you. I I'm, I'm really moved by by all this sharing and remembering those days just one year ago. And we don't have much time, but I just want to, I mean, Claudia explained it beautifully. And I just want to add from our perspective, from, from, from the presencing perspective on, on awareness-based action and on awareness-based action research, that all through this process, we were kind of applying, not only providing the tools and methods or applying them in, in the community, but also applying them on ourselves, closing back the feedback loop on our own experience, going ourselves through, through the stacks, uh, the, the Daya community learning what is a stack. And so it was all through the process, this, this feedback loop where you forgot who was who in the, in the game. And 
I think that uh, this is very much what we call a generative experience when you so sort of forget a little bit of, of or your of your in identity identity, and you kind of get transformed in the process. And personally, uh, I I I was I, I want to bring in a story of a young kid, the musician. Do you remember the musician, the one who played many instruments? And so he stuck. His tag was with the hands tied in the back, kneeled on the floor, like when when they're going to kill, uh, for example, the, the drug dealers and, and cartels, when they're going to kill people and these massive killings. And his sentence was, what if we can forget about the killings? What if we can forget about the massacres? And when we build on his stack and other stacks for, from our own, this moment, this moment from uh, of co-creation to perform, the piece that we performed, the part of the piece that we performed was um, from his stack was uh, there were some of us uh, representing the oppressed and there was this oppressor, Cristobal, who is a such a, a, a beautiful human being, but he was playing the oppressor, right, really. And there was a musician, he, the musician coming into the scene and first confronting the oppressor, then opening his heart to the oppressor and releasing, dancing with him and releasing all the oppressed with the music, with art. So his message and the message of, of that collective, and that was the last piece that if you remember, it was the last one when we all danced together after that. And so I was a witness and I was part of this transformative power of social art from this healing power, this what, what Otto was sharing at the beginning, you know, this, um, this this healing power of, of collective trauma of collective wounds and and this peace building that heather was bringing also so uh, i i was i just wanted to share that as as a beautiful treasure from our experience oh, thank you so much thank you partially the what i'm hearing from from um, all of you who so generously are sharing is this um, ability to actually listen into um, the stories of people, listen into the sculptures that people make. And um, when, we, when we say visible, we mean that it's, I mean, the theater, the word theater means that it's, uh, the root of that word is to, to is a place, is something that is beholden, is, it is seen. Um, and, and yet by, I think we're also talking about sensing like this, the qualities that we sense in one another from their stories, from their voice, from the music, from poems that arose, from nature. We were in this beautiful place, which also supported the work. And so this sense of the conversation between, let's say, ourselves and our world is so much what I'm picking up from both of what the two of you have just shared and, and earlier. And maybe the practice, we could move um, in our last bits, if it's okay, to a little practice. Um, unless, is there anything, Claudia, you would like to say before we move to our duets? Just, just another uh, fast image of another of the kids whose piece was about a healer. And he's, he remembered him, becoming the healer and actually his whole the whole performance was like if he was completely en embodying a mayan healer and the whole ex ex space became a healing space for everyone in the space so he was able to connect to the source of that energy and the belief on that culture an awakening to something that was so ancestral and so alive. And it was a revelation, I think, for everyone there. Yeah. Thank you. It's so there's so much wisdom in each of us, right? We're so there's so much wisdom. 
And the question, if we go back to, to Otto's um, doing and uh, the gap between what we think and what we do, this sense of how does that wisdom come forth and then be engaged through some confidence. And one of the things that we noticed, that I noticed with our whole group, is this sense of a, a very unconditional confidence, not based on success or failure or who, who did what, but everybody could co-create. Everybody's offering was completely uh, embraced and honored and welcomed. And there was so much confidence that grew from a group of people that generally didn't make theater. This was, uh, <laughs> you know, these are these are not people in the theater. These are just regular folks, most of them, uh, both the young people and the adults. And and yet we all live a life. You know, we all engage in living, and that is enough. You know, that was enough. Everyone has a story. Everyone kind of can feel into what it is to co-create with one another. Thank you so much. And maybe, um, Laura, if you could help me sh with the duet. Thank you so much, yeah. Claudia, for joining us. Um, so in our duets, we often talk about, in, in presencing uh, world, we talk, which many of you know, about the, the four levels of listening and four levels of conversation, that they can be useful, all these different levels of being more um, polite and also being noticing difference, how important that is, and also uh, developing an empathy as we listen and speak with people. And, and one of my teachers says that uh, society is created one conversation at a time. So the duet practice is something that allows us to feel our embodied conversation. And I would like to introduce this concept of ma I think um, Otto showed earlier the book cover, and the, the calligraphy on the cover of the book is called, is a ma, and which is an interval or a space. These are this is a gate, and this is the sun shining through, our own warmth and brilliance and openness and light, can come through in these little gaps. So we would like to invite you to try a little conversation with another person. Some of our broke, breakout groups will have three, but you can just do it in twos, find a first two and then maybe one that dances with the third one or does this. So here's the practice and it's, it's short, but it, 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 it's good that we have a little experience uh, ourselves. So it's just a conversation, but it's not like ping pong. Uh, so if, if I do something and then immediately uh, Laura responds, it's very, it's more like a boom, 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 keeping the conversation going ping pong style. But in this case, I'm going to make a gesture and I'll just just do whatever I feel like And my gesture is is like this right now. And then there's going to be a space and ma, a gap. Laura sees the image, but she lets it land in her body and in the shared space that we have. So it's not just that she's responding to me, but it's though the space arises as a gesture through her. Likewise, I see her gesture, I feel my own body, I feel our shared space, our shared social space, even though we're in two different, completely different places. And then I let my gesture up, up, arise. Likewise, she ex we're experiencing our shared space and then her gesture arises. We don't think about it or plan.
once we kind of establish uh, some sense of this ma and space, we can begin to move together a bit. And then we just do that for a few minutes. Exactly. Thank you, my dear. Um, thank you so much. So it's your turn now in breakout groups to do this. Now, the main thing is the ma, right? Whatever you do will be perfect. It's just really letting the space settle so you can really, really listen, really listen in to what the other is, um, the feeling quality of what the other offers. Okay? Is that clear? Please just take your time. If there's, if, if there's two in a group, that would be great. And if there are three, then just a little shorter so that each person gets a chance to try it out. How many minutes do we have? We have 10 minutes, Arona. Thank you. So that's great. Then you'll have a, probably a little time at the end just to have a, a, a short um, uh, dialogue about your experience. So please enjoy your duet.
I was saying, Carol and I couldn't see each other, but we still had a wonderful conversation with our hands and telling each other what we were doing. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I hope that you had a wonderful experience and thank you, Arwana, for guiding us into it. Um, Arwana, do you wanna share anything before we invite others in? Only that um, in our duet, this, we were, we were um, so appreciating that you can actually feel in a kinesthetic way, even in this context, we can feel the embodied presence of another person. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's just such a blessing somehow that we could listen and communicate in that way with this kind of language that is not dependent on speaking the same language, for instance, verbal language, or, and it, it kind of transcends a variety of different kinds of burials, uh, kind of as, as Gio said earlier, in terms of, um, uh, you know, economic status or um, even ethnicity to some extent, there's some language that can, we can listen to and we can feel in our, in our as long as there have been people, they've been making these gestures and we can feel that quality, which is uh, so, I so appreciate the care that, also the care that we can really listen in that embodied way. Thank you, Arwana. Um, yeah, it's a powerful act and even across international boundaries, of course, you know, um, there, I just saw Brooke said from the U.S. and France, they were having, you know, this, this sharing, so embodied listening across uh, many perceived boundaries, language and otherwise. Um, so wonderful. I see that people have already started sharing in the chat um, any insights and anything that came up with this embodied listening practice. Really, you know, what we're looking at is what insights have we gathered from this embodied listening and um, and where does that, you know, where, where are we seeing little sparks of, of what's possible with this practice? So we'll take comments in the chat, but if you'd like to uh, raise your hand, you can click the reactions button at the bottom of your screen and uh, click raise hand, and we can bring your voice and video across the two Zoom rooms that are threaded together right now. Se puede preguntar, uh, can I uh, say something? Uh, well, is my In just a moment, uh, Martha, you'll be able to come in, okay? We have um, Alexandra up first, and then we'll bring in Martha and then Max. Is, is Alexander able to speak? I now? am. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was on. I was so reluctant to do this. And once I engaged with my two partners that we were a threesome, it was magical, <laughs> transcendent, <laughs> and beyond words. And there was such an intimacy and unity as we did the, did the process together. We grew in our relationship is what it felt like. Thank you, Alexandra. We have Patricia in Zoom too. Patricia there? There we go, maybe try again. Hmm. Also part of the connection. It was beautiful. 
Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. I know that Martha wanted to share. So, um, Dr. Martha, that's what I see. Yes. Uh, hello. Well, I was lucky we were only two and both is, uh, able to speak the same language. And then for me is my first time uh, more well my second time because morning was the first one now this uh, later and uh, the the person already have seven years so uh, it was fascinating and I picked up something uh, when uh, when it got the the, the um, uh, how can I say the process the speed and rhythm uh, change uh, very differently it started very slow and was moving, then became like a kind of a dance together. And, and I became like playing. It was like, even I started like jumping. I don't know what happened. And then he said something <laughs> that, uh, that it is for my reflection. He said, time, who, uh, who takes the time or who guides this time? And for me, it was fascinating because uh, throughout the, 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 this connection, it seems to me that there was no sense of time. It was just, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, a dynamic flowing. Uh, so please, can you uh, explain me a little bit? Because I just sense it. I feel it. I'm very happy. It was beautiful, <laughs> but I have no idea <laughs> what it is. <laughs> That's so great. Me either, Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so um, we'll take a couple more comments before we move to our um, visual resonance practice. Uh, let's go to Beatrice in, oh, sorry. We're gonna stay with channel one and then we'll go to you, Beatrice. So Max, in, in uh, this Zoom room, Max. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, I was connecting from Berlin with a lady in Idaho and it was like from the beginning connection was happening and I find really that the the ma the pause is essential for that. It's that's what makes wow. the magic possible. Wow. And so we got then very very slowly into the second phase of the starting to move together. And when we finally came to a close. We had still two and a half minutes, but we both hardly had any words because we were so touched and uh, I'm still very touched. And uh, for me, it's, it's really the, the essence of the work we do together, what, what's happening here. And I, I noticed in the whole session, this is, so much closer than anything words can convey. And, and it's so obvious that we need a different experience of our, our whole humanness. And so I'm very, very thankful from my heart for Awana and everybody else for creating this direct simplicity and, and truth. Thank you. I love the conversation that's also happening in the chat too around still this, uh, this resonance around time. Um, but we will move to Beatrice for our final comment. Hear me? Yes, Beatrice, we can. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Well, I am in Vancouver, Canada, and I was connecting with a very nice lady in Massachusetts. What I felt is that by the sole fact of having the intention in our heart, 
to be connected, connection started happening even before we were connected. I don't know if I'm clear. Mm -hmm. I could feel that that energy of oneness was already there, prepared for us. And we started doing our movements and more and more I noticed that we wanted to listen to the other one. And then we ended up mirroring ourselves and sending hugs to each other. It was a very spiritual experience of oneness. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Beatrice. Um, we had one hand that was raised that um, we want to honor Mia. Um, if you want to bring her final comment before our visual resonance. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to say that I felt that my heart went through the, the screen. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> thank you so much, Mia. <laughs> Um, we so appreciate this and it's something you can do so please don't think that this is the first time or the last time you're going to do this please continue with your friends and family and other zoom connectors uh, with the practices uh, because they are simple and and they we love them and uh, and I loved what was said um, earlier that Connection is not something that we make. Connection is how it works, right? This interdependency means that we are always connected. There's n this connection is a concept. We are always connected. And this work just reminds us of that. It reminds us of our deep connection with one another and our deep our longing that for this goodness of humanity to come forth in our organizations and our teams and our communities. So I really, really appreciate these comments. And um, Olaf is just so such, such a brilliant friend and collaborator and um, artist and how he can bring forth our conversations and the feeling quality and the clarity of our knowing. So I, I'm so, we can turn now to, to Olaf for our final part of our program. Um, thank you very much. Um, just one thing I wanna share, I, I was, for me in this session, there's one word which stood out and, and somehow resonated through all throughout the whole time that was authenticity. And I was, I was wondering, okay, where should I put that? Usually that, that must be in the middle because for me, it felt like this is the central part. And I struggled how to do that because I thought if I write it down, it's not authentic anymore. It's a label, it's, it's, it's not. And then I, I thought, well, I just <laughs> thought this for me, like the middle part, I don't have to write it down. That's for me, it is authenticity. And yeah, <laughs> that's all. Thank you, Olaf. Um, so I invite all of us to go full screen on Olaf's image. And we'll just take a few more moments in the close here to just sit with this image and be with this image. Notice what you see what you sense and what you feel.
And as that begins to formulate into words, you can type into the chat using the prompts, I see, I sense, or I feel. We'll read a few of those out. I see, I sense, I feel. I feel the life of the antennas converging to the authentic heart. I see vibrant light. I see a drop of love falling into the ocean. I see growth. I see light shining from the center as it opens space. I feel heaviness with sprouts of light emerging. I see the spirits of our ancestors sharing the space with us. I feel joy sensing the possibility of a loving community growing together with much love. I feel a seismic shift. I see light rising from dark flames, invisible self making new dance. I see center come alive. I feel vibrations. I see light radiating. I feel refreshed and renewed. I sense I am because you are. I sense rhythm of new awakening. I see making dissolve. I see light. I sense beauty arising from pain. I feel liberation. I see inauthenticity burning away. I see a pulsating light. I sense centeredness. I feel drawn to the light. I see an authentic heart center. I feel it reading it out. bringing in our YouTube voice as well. I see two gentle wings surrounding the center of light, authenticity. Thank you all for your contributions, for your holding of this incredible celebration of Social Presencing Theater and Arowana's um, new book, Social Presencing Theater, The Art of Making a True Move. So we will put in the chat how you can access that. I know that um, distribution continues, um, getting it outside of the United States as well. Um, so please feel free to check out that link. Um, we will also be able to continue the conversation. I know it feels like just a beginning um, in our Sutra space. So you can click on that link to continue with others who participated in the earlier session and this session. Um, if you're interested in going deeper into social presencing theater and that practice, um, there is a U Academy course uh, taking place March 19th to 21st. So you can come in with that. Um, and um, there are regional tracks, which will be continuing throughout the course of this month. Um, so if you would like to join in languages of Portuguese, Spanish, German, French, Russian, Japanese. Those sessions will be taking place March 10th, 11th, 15th, 17th, 21st, 25th, 31st. So we're, we're continuing um, Gaia around the world over the next few weeks. Um, and then we look forward to April 1st, we'll be back uh, in the Gaia session again.
Um, I did see Beth's hand and Beth Gender Noah is such a important part of our community. We love very much. So Beth, if you did want to uh, say something, now is the time. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I want to, I don't want to miss this moment. Um, I really want to say, um, you know, it took Otto to see what Arowana had. So it's, it's really for all of us somehow being seen um, and not for the things that we can't see in ourselves is what I see present in this work. And then Arowana's dedication and determination and so many people stepping in and in and out over the years, taking this on, refining it. Um, and I'm so thrilled to be able to celebrate Arowana. Can, Big, huge congratulations on the publication of your book and your work, which is making a difference all over the planet. Just sending joy and congratulations um, to all and um, crying tears of joy. Many of us have been crying for maybe five or six hours now. So thank you, Beth, for your words and for your celebration. Um, it really is just, it's incredible. And it's really um, everything you just said. So maybe we can come off of mute, each of us, and um, say celebration or some sort of congratulations, if you'd like, and uh, uh, yeah. warm-hearted goodbye. Congratulations. 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 Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.